What kind of pizza do you like? Who's your favourite singer? Where do you live? Why are you tired? How long is this lesson? So, Josh, do you like films? Oh, yeah, I love films. Great. What kind of films do you like? Oh, uh, all kinds, really. I watch a lot. Really? Lucky you. I don't watch any these days. I'm always too busy, but I do have some free time tonight. Which films do you recommend? Well, there's Kicks, about football players at an American high school. If you like sports films, you'll like this one. And uh, there's a film about the police that I saw last week. Mm -hmm. I sort of enjoyed that, but I can't remember what it's called. Maybe not that one. Then there's a comedy called Surf Brothers. I saw that last night. Really funny. Oh, good. I like comedies. Is that online? No, it's in the cinema at the moment. Oh, right. OK. Wow, you really do watch a lot of films. How many do you watch a week? Six or seven. That's almost one a day. I know, I told you. I watch a lot of films. Hello, welcome to this week's Culture Show with me, Anna Taylor. Today, we are talking about greetings, what to say or do in that first moment when you meet someone. It can be difficult, can't it? You meet someone new and you decide to shake hands, but the other person decides to give you a kiss on the cheek. Has anything like this ever happened to you? This kind of thing happens all the time because there are so many different greetings from all over the world. How we greet someone for the first time is important because we want people to like us. So let's take a look at some different ways of greeting so that next time you do it the right way. In the US, most people shake hands when they meet new people. Women often kiss both their male and female friends on the cheek or hug them. Men often do the same with their female friends, but they usually shake hands with their male friends. In Brazil, people shake hands when they meet someone new. With friends and family, men still shake hands, but women usually kiss each other on the cheek. It's sometimes difficult to know how many times to kiss. In some areas, they kiss once, in some, they kiss twice, and in other areas, they kiss three times. In Qatar, people usually shake hands when they meet for the first time. However, when men and women meet, they don't usually do this. They put their right hand on their chest. When female friends meet, they kiss each other on the cheek or touch each other's hands. When male friends meet, they shake hands or press their noses together twice, a traditional greeting in Qatar. In South Korea, the traditional greeting is to bow. With friends, men and women bow their head. However, in important meetings, business people bow with the top half of their body. 
Younger people bow low when they're with someone older. They can only stand up after the older person stands up. In Thailand, people put their hands together in front of them when they meet new people. Then they bow their head. When they meet friends, their hands are low in front of their chest. But when they meet someone older or more important, their hands are high and their fingers are near the top of their head. And finally, in Tibet, the greeting is a little unusual. In many countries, showing your tongue to another person is not polite. But in Tibet, it's a traditional way of saying hello. People put their hands together in front of them and then show their tongue, but only for a very short time. So, if you ever go to South Korea, Thailand or Tibet, now you can greet people in the right way. Welcome to Podcast 32. Success Do you want to be better at your job? How often do you think, I want to be more successful, but I'm not sure how? We talk to some successful people to try and find out about their habits. Here are eight tips for you to be more like them. 1. Have clear goals. Successful people always know what they want in life and they work hard to get it. 2. Try new things. Successful people are rarely bored and they always look for new and exciting experiences. 3. Ask a lot of questions. Successful people always want to know more. In fact, they want to know everything about everything. 4. Listen carefully. Successful people are often good listeners and don't do all the talking in conversations. 5. Plan your time well. Successful people don't usually do lots of things at the same time. They check their emails every three or four hours. They sometimes check their messages only once a day. 6. Take care of yourself. Successful people usually have busy and stressful lives, so try to sleep well, eat well and do regular exercise. 7. Take time off. It's important. Successful people hardly ever work at weekends, so make sure you spend time with friends and family too. And finally, 8. If things don't work, just start again. Successful people never stop trying. He doesn't often try new things. He sometimes asks a lot of questions. I'm often bored at weekends. She goes to the cinema once a week. You hardly ever ask questions. Actually, a person who I think is really successful is my grandma, Elizabeth, my mum's mum. That's lovely. Why is that then? Well, she's not famous or rich, 
but she's a really nice and happy person. She's retired now, but she's still very active, even at 85. She always gets up between 5 and 6 in the morning and cleans the house. After breakfast, she usually goes out for a long walk. She walks everywhere, actually. She hardly ever uses public transport. She sounds great. Tell me more. Uh, okay, so every Wednesday she looks after my kids, her great-grandchildren, all day. They're three and four, and very energetic. She was a teacher in a primary school, so she's very good with children. She plays with them all the time. Wow, to be like that at 85, that's amazing. Okay, so a person who I think is successful is... We're having a great time. She is eating a sandwich. I'm working in the garden. They are working outside. We're having a great time. She's eating a sandwich. I'm working in the garden. They're working outside. Hey, Stephanie. How's it going? OK, thanks. Guess what? I'm trying a no-sugar diet for a month. What? But you love chocolate and sweets. You always have something for dessert. You can't live without sugar. So how's it going? OK, so far. I'm trying lots of new types of food and drink. I miss chocolate, though. I usually have some for a snack, but now I just have some fruit instead. An apple or something. And what about exercise? Well, I'm not doing any sport at the moment, but I walk to work every day. It's great, actually. I feel a lot better. Well, seriously. That's brilliant, Stephanie. Well done. Excuse me, can you help me? Of course. What's the problem? I'm trying to buy a ticket to Manchester, but I don't know how to use this machine. Ah, no problem. You need to choose your ticket on the main screen there. OK. Right. Like this. That's right. Then put your card in here to pay and your ticket will come out here. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Hi there. I'm looking for somewhere to stay for a couple of nights. No problem. We have lots of options. What sort of thing are you looking for? Well, I'd like somewhere in the centre and not too expensive. Well, there's the Ramblers Inn over on Queen Street, which is very nice. Lots of young people there. And it's also the cheapest place to stay in the centre. That sounds lovely. What's the quickest way to get there? I'm quite tired after the train journey here. Take the number 325 bus from the top of the high street in front of the bank. It'll get you there in about 10 minutes and costs one pound. Is that clear? Um, sorry. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, of course. Go to the high street and find the bus stop. Right. It's in front of the bank. Take bus number 325. Thanks. And then check your answers with the person next to you. Uh, did you get that? Um, no. Sorry, I didn't hear what she said. I'm not feeling well today. What do I need to do?
Answer the questions, then we compare our answers. Okay. Which exercise is it? Exercise five. It's this one here. Oh, great. Thanks for your help. Did you learn to sing at school? Yes, I did. Did she finish the marathon? No, she didn't. How old were you? I wasn't very old, actually. Was he from Italy? No, he wasn't. You're so good at the guitar, Megan. Where did you learn? Well, I taught myself, actually. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. I'm not surprised. How did you teach yourself? My parents bought me a guitar when I was about 13. I bought myself some books and then learnt from those. Did you teach yourself to read music too? No, I could already do that. I had some piano lessons when I was younger. Oh, right. How long did it take you to learn? I could play quite well after about two years, I think. How often did you practice? Every day. Sometimes for about two hours. That's quite a lot. I know. I really wanted to learn. I wanted to be a musician and write my own music. Did you write your own music? Yes, and I still do sometimes. I didn't know that. Can I hear some of it? Sure. I've got a YouTube channel. You can hear some of it on there. Look, I'll show you. This is a very popular cake where I come from, Cara. Would you like to try it? Yes, please. Mmm. It tastes just fantastic. But it's very, very sweet. Is there a lot of sugar in it? Actually, there isn't any sugar in it. I mean, we don't add any when we make it. But there's a lot of chocolate and milk, and that's what makes it taste so sweet. Mm, and creamy. Well, I love it. It's absolutely delicious. Um, could I have another one? <laughs> of course! Here you are, sir. Oh, I love that dish. Great choice. Mmm, I don't know. It looks a bit plain. Rice, egg and cucumber. Go on, try a bit. I'm sure you'll like it. Mmm, well, it is a bit dry. Have some sauce with it. It's amazing. OK. That might help. <coughs> oh, wow! What's wrong? Oh, it's hot. Really hot. <laughs> yes, it's got lots of chilli in it. Do you like it? Uh, well, not really. Sorry. It's quite sour too. I think I'll order something different. I excuse me, I'd like... What's that you're eating, Manu? It's a salad from my part of the world. Would you like to try it? Yes, please. I'll give it a go. Mmm, it's light and fresh. Yes, all the ingredients are fresh, and it's got a little oil in it. It's pretty healthy. Mmm, lots of different flavours, too. I really like that. Yes. There are a few herbs and spices to give it more flavour. 
I usually have a bit of bread with it too. I'll give you the recipe later if you like. Yes, please. That would be great. Actually, there isn't any sugar in it. But there's a lot of chocolate and milk. Have some sauce with it. It's got lots of chili in it. It's a salad from my part of the world. Yes, it has a little oil in it. Yes, there are a few herbs and spices to give it more flavor. I usually have a bit of bread with it too. There's a lot of salt in this. There are some eggs in the fridge. There isn't any sugar in it. There's a bit of soy sauce. There are a few apples on the table. Hello and welcome to What a Great Idea, the show that gives you a lot to think about. The topic this week is food, and we have two guests who are going to present their ideas. Firstly, Professor Jenny Hattie will argue that eating meat five days or more a week isn't good for you. Then, Chef Sarah Callaghan will argue that we should all eat.、Uh, Insects. <laughs> Before we discuss these ideas, each guest will have sixty seconds to present their idea. So let's start with Jenny. Jenny, your time starts now. Thanks, Rob. Right. Well, I'd like to talk about meat. I love it. And I ate it all the time until last year, when I decided to make a change. I started to eat vegetarian dishes five days a week, and meat only on two days. I think it's a good idea for everyone to do the same, and here's why. First, in general, it's good for us to eat less meat if we can. I certainly feel healthier these days. I also think it's better for the world around us. Producing meat uses a lot of water and energy, and we need to move the meat from place to place. It's really not very good for the environment. Also, it's a lot cheaper, of course. Actually, I always thought that vegetarian food was boring, but. You know what? There are lots of really great vegetarian dishes, so why not give some a try? Thanks, Jenny. Okay, so now it's Sarah's turn. Sarah, you have just sixty seconds to present your idea. Go. Well, I think it's a good idea for everyone to eat. Insects, you know, in many parts of the world, people eat them as a basic food. The reason is that insects are actually very good for us. They have important, healthy things in them, so they're great to add to our diets. Insects are also good for the environment because they're small, so they don't cost much to produce. The possibility to produce lots of healthy food cheaply is really important. This is because there are around seven billion people in the world today, and the number is growing all the time. Insects can help us to feed everyone. Many people don't like the idea, but actually, there are thousands of different kinds of insects, all with a different delicious taste. 
Very interesting. Thanks, Sara. I love it, and I ate it all the time. I decided to make a change. It's good for us to eat less meat if we can. We need to move the meat from place to place. It's a lot cheaper, of course. I always thought that vegetarian food was boring. I think it's a good idea for everyone to eat insects. People eat them as a basic food. The reason is that insects are actually very good for us. They're great to add to our diets. Insects can help us to feed everyone. There are thousands of different kinds of insects. Well, thanks to both of you for your interesting ideas. Jenny, let's start with yours. You say that we should all become vegetarian for five days a week. Does it need to be five days? Well, we usually work or study for five days, and so that's a good time to change something. Then at the weekends, when you go out and meet friends, you don't need to worry. You can eat what you want. But how about being vegetarian for just one or two days a week? Yeah, that's good too. It doesn't need to be five days. It can be one, two, or three days if that's easier for you. The important thing is to eat less meat. I think. And maybe we can eat insects instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I must say, Sara, I don't really like the idea of eating insects. Vegetarian food, okay, there are some good dishes, but insects? Well, I can't imagine a good insect dish. <laughs> I know, insect dishes don't sound very tasty, do they? It's an unusual idea for most people. <laughs> It sure is. Well, okay, a lot of us are afraid of insects, but only because we didn't eat them when we were children. So it seems very strange to us. But if we prepare meals with insects for the children of today, they won't think it's strange in future. That's a good point, Sara. Thank you. Now tell us about some of these lovely insect dishes you cook. Hey, Kate, I got eighty percent in my history exam. Can you believe it? Eighty percent! Oh, that's brilliant! You always do well, Ali. I got my chemistry results back too. Oh, and? I got fifty-one percent. Ah, hey, that's not that bad, and it's only the first year. Hi, Marco. This is for you for fixing my shower last week. Oh, thanks. But I was happy to help, you know. I know, but I wanted to buy you a thank you gift. Go on, open it. Oh, er, uh, socks with cats on them. <laughs> They're, they're lovely. Thanks. They're a bit silly, but you know me, I always like being different. Well, thank you. It's really nice of you, Fran. <laughs> no problem. Glad you like them. Hey, Helena. 
I'm having a party at mine on Saturday. Just a few friends. Do you want to come? Yeah, that sounds great. What time? Any time from eight o'clock. Okay. Do I need to bring anything? Well, I'm asking people to bring drinks, but don't worry about food. I'm going to make a big curry. Oh, great! I love your curries. They're so good. Hey, Ray. Guess what? You sound excited. Tell me. Do you remember that competition I entered on the local radio station? Oh yeah. How did that go? I won it. Brilliant, Simone. How exciting! What did you win? Two tickets to the music festival next week. No way. That's amazing. Who are you going with then? You, of course. Me. Really? Yeah. That sounds fantastic. That sounds fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. How exciting! How exciting! What a great idea! What a great idea! That sounds really interesting. That sounds really interesting. That sounds fantastic. Amazing. How exciting! What a great idea. That sounds really interesting. The streets are dirtier than they were five years ago. The north of the city is older than the south of the city. This part of the beach is cleaner than the other part. My town is busier than yours. Right. So we need to write this article on the top ten places to visit by tomorrow.、Hmm. There are five categories. And we have to write about two places for each one. Let's choose the places we want to write about first. How about we start with famous buildings?、Mm -hmm. My favourite buildings are the Louvre in Paris and the Colosseum in Rome. Oh, really? I'm not sure. They're very famous places, and everyone knows about them. I think we should choose somewhere less popular. What about Prague Castle? It's quieter and more peaceful than those two. Okay, but I don't think we should just pick places because they're less popular. The Louvre is nice because it's more modern than Prague Castle. But it can get very crowded in the summer. Yes, I see what you mean. Okay, let's choose the Louvre. What about the British Museum for the other one? It's a lovely building. It's popular, but not as crowded as the Colosseum. Good idea. It's much cheaper too. In fact, it's free. <laughs> That's true. Okay, great. Next category: street markets. It's the easiest place to find. It's the oldest building in the area. This is the ugliest hotel in town. They have the nicest food. So. Where do you think we should stay, ladies? I'd like to do something different and exciting. Yes. Well, I had a stressful year at work. I really just want to relax in a five-star hotel. I love the look of this place, the Mantra Resort. Look at the colour of that sea. It looks like the most beautiful place in the world. 
Yeah, but it's the most expensive. Look at those prices. Yes, I suppose so. It is a bit pricey. I really like the look of Casa Tranquilla. It looks really quiet and peaceful. And it's the cheapest option. And look at those views. But you know I hate heights, Shannon. <laughs> this is going to be difficult. And it's the furthest place from the airport. It would take a really long time to get there. I don't want to spend the whole time travelling. You're right. And we don't have much time. Only a week. What about the Happy Campers Village? It's out in the countryside. Hmm, yes. Actually, I think it looks like the most interesting place to stay. I like the idea of staying in the countryside. Me too. And the food looks great too. Cooked on an open fire. Yum. OK, let's go there. I'll book it now. So, today we're asking you about common activities that you've never done in your life. Let's talk to our first caller. Val, are you there? Yes, John, I'm here. Um, well, I've never learnt to swim. Oh, OK. Can you tell us why? Well, I've never had the opportunity. I've never had lessons and I don't really like the seaside. Have you ever tried? Yes, I have. I went to a pool when I was in Spain once, but I've never swum in the sea. Well, Val, it's never too late to learn, you know. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I think I'm too old now. I'm sure that's not true. OK, nice talking to you, Val. Let's speak to our next caller, Kate. Hi, Kate. Hi. Well, John, most people laugh when I tell them this, but I've never ridden a bike. Really? Well, surely you've tried it at least once. Well, when I was a child, I saw my brother fall off his bike and he broke his arm. He cried so much. So, when my parents bought me a bike, I was really scared and I didn't want to ride it. Are you still scared? Um, uh, I don't think so. Maybe one day I'll learn. <laughs> Who knows? Thanks, Kate. Now let's speak to Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi, John. I'm not calling about me, actually. I'm calling about my friend Jim. He's never watched a football match in his life. Can you believe it? Never. Not even on TV. Well, sure, I think he's seen a match on TV. I meant that he's never been to the stadium. We talk about football all the time. We go to the matches, but he's just not interested. Have you ever tried to take him to a match? Yes, we all have. My friends and I, that is, many times. But he just won't come. Well, thanks, Eddie. I guess he just doesn't like football. Right, let's talk to one more caller before the news. Andy, are you there? Hi. Yeah. I'm here. I, uh, I've never cooked a meal. Wow. How old are you? I'm 22. How do you eat then? Well, I still live at home, so my parents cook for me. Right, I see. Uh, have you ever boiled an egg? Uh, no, I haven't. I've made sandwiches and toast, and I've put things in the microwave, but I've never used a cooker. Wow, that is unusual. I've ordered pizza lots of times, though. I'm sure you have, Andy. Now, 
It's time to go to the. I've never eaten with chopsticks. Have you? Yes, I have. Sarah's broken her arm. Oh no, I've never broken a bone. Have you ever fallen asleep in public? No, I haven't. Has Max ever cooked a meal for you? Yes, he has. Shall I start? Okay. I've been on TV. When was that? Uh, it was maybe two years ago. What happened? Well, <laughs> it's a funny story actually. I had a job interview at a local TV station. I arrived and waited in reception. What was the job? Oh, uh, it um, it was in the IT department. Anyway, after a few minutes, someone took me into this room where there were some cameras and a woman in a suit. Why were there cameras in the IT department? <laughs> well, this is the funny bit. <laughs> Suddenly, the lights came on. And the woman started talking to the camera. She was a news reporter talking about a news story, and suddenly, I was on TV. Really? What did you do? Well, I was really surprised. The woman started asking me lots of questions. And what did you say? I tried to answer them, but I couldn't. And I told her I was the wrong person. What did she do? She said sorry and started talking to the camera again. And someone quickly took me out of the room. How did they make that mistake? Apparently, the real person had the same name as me. What about the job? Did you get it? Job. Oh, uh, uh, no, I didn't. So, am I telling the truth or a lie? Hmm, I'm not sure. Hmm, I'm not sure. It's a crazy story, but. You gave me a lot of information, so I think,、uh, I think you're telling me the truth. Am I right? No, sorry. The story's true. I read about it in a newspaper, but it didn't happen to me. I've never been on TV. Oh. One point to you then. I'm here today with Karen Jackson. Karen's trying to have one amazing, life-changing experience every year. She made a list of twenty things she'd like to do over twenty years, and she's already done five of them. Karen, tell us why you're doing this. Well, there are two reasons really. Firstly, when I'm old, I want to look back and feel like I've done lots of exciting things in my life. And secondly, it's great to have goals in life. It makes you feel good. Okay, so tell me, what kinds of activities are on your list? Well, things I'd like to do. Things I'd like to see and places I'd like to visit. And what places have you visited so far? Well, I've been to the Great Wall of China and Iceland. Did you walk along the Great Wall?、Mm, yes and no. 
I wanted to walk along it from start to finish, but it's really long, over twenty thousand kilometers. I only walked about two hundred kilometers in the end, but I was happy with that. The views were amazing, and in some places it was just so quiet and relaxing. And why did you go to Iceland? I wanted to see the Northern Lights. For three nights, my friend and I sat outside, but unfortunately, we didn't see them, and it was very, very cold. Why didn't you see them? Well, unfortunately, it was very cloudy. Oh dear! Sorry to hear that. Yeah, but we'll try again. <laughs> There were lots of great things to do in Iceland during the day. We went on a great boat trip. That was really fun, actually. Oh, and I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro too. You have? Wow! Tell us about that. Well, everybody says it's really difficult, so I wanted to try it. You definitely need to be very fit and healthy. I felt sick quite a lot of the time because it's difficult to breathe up there. But when I finally got to the top, well, the view was fantastic. And what activities have you planned for the future? Right. So next year, I'd like to learn to fly, but it isn't going to be easy. Really? So why do you want to do it then? Because I'm afraid of flying. And I think learning how to fly a plane will help me. Okay. Well, the best of luck with that. What else? I'd like to go on a safari holiday somewhere in Africa, maybe northern Kenya or Tanzania. Why is that? I'd really like to see lots of wild animals like lions and elephants. It's not the same when you see them in the zoo. It all sounds great, Karen. Thank you very much for sharing your plans with us today, and lots of luck for the future. Thanks. Jack, is that you? Oh, hi, Angie. Hi. I haven't seen you in ages. How are things? Great. Alex and I finally got married in the summer. Did you? Oh, that's fantastic news! Congratulations. Thanks. Yes, we live in Dayton now. Oh, right. I've never been there. What's it like? Well, it's quieter than here, but we like it. The area's really nice. What about things here? Hmm. Have you heard about the park on Green Street? No. What? They want to build lots of new houses on it. Oh no! That's not good. That's where all the kids play soccer. I loved it there when I was young. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I can't see you. Oh, now I can. How are you? I'm great, thanks. What time is it there? It must be late. Yeah, it's eleven o'clock. Nearly bedtime. <laughs> so, how have you been? Okay, thanks. I'm really busy at work, but I had two weeks off last month. I went to Vancouver, actually. Oh, lucky you! How was it? We talked about going there when we were at university. Do you remember? Yes, I do. Of course, it was great. We went camping and did some water sports. That's brilliant. 
Didn't you go on holiday recently too? Yeah, but it wasn't much fun. We had a problem with the apartment. No hot water for three days. Then I got ill, so we had to come home early. Oh, what a shame! Were you very ill? Yes, kind of. I was in bed for a week. I felt awful. Oh well, hopefully you can have another holiday later in the year. Yeah, hopefully. But tell me a bit more about Vancouver. Hi, Mara. Oh, hey, Dylan. How are you? Fine. Guess what? What? I got this yesterday. See? Oh, a watch. It's not just a watch, Mara. It's the best smartwatch you can have. Really? What does it do then? I can make calls, send messages, pay for things with it. I can listen to music. And... Wow. Okay. So it's pretty good then. Yeah, it's amazing. It's got running apps, maps, things like that. Sounds amazing. My news is not so great. I lost my phone last week. I can't find it anywhere. Oh no! I'm really sorry to hear that. Have you bought a new one? No, I haven't got enough money. But it's okay. I don't have to check my messages every few minutes. Hey Jane, what are your plans for Burns Night? Well, I'm going to invite my neighbours to my house for dinner. What about you? I'm going to be at my parents' house. My mum's going to cook for the whole family. How many people is that? I don't know. Maybe fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, but we always have fun. What are you going to cook? Well, I'd like to make a traditional meal, but I'm not a very good cook. I'm going to try my best, though. Good for you. I'm not going to cook haggis, though. <laughs> are you crazy? You have to cook haggis on Burns Night. All right, all right. Haggis it is then. I want to ask my neighbours to bring a dessert. Do you think that's okay? Yes, I'm sure that'll be fine. What poems are you going to read? I don't know. I'm going to sit down and plan everything next week. Next week. My mum started planning everything a month ago. Dan wants to have a dinner party next week. Kelly's going to contact her old school friends. I'd like to go out for a meal later. I drive to work. We'll help them clean. I call Ella every day. We'll play on Sunday. What are you doing for Sam's birthday, Jake? I'm not sure yet. I want to organise a big night out with all our friends, you know, maybe a meal or something. But I have no idea where to start. Oh, I know a great app you can use. Let me show you on my phone. It's called BuzzTree, and it gives you lots of interesting ideas for things to do. Oh, really? So, how does it work? First, you answer some questions about you, things like your age, interests, if you want to eat, that kind of thing. I see. Next, you press go, and then it gives you ideas for things to do using the information you put in. Thanks. That looks great. 
So then I just have to call all our friends and invite people. Call people? Seriously, it's not the nineties, Jake. Use this app. <laughs> okay,、uh, tell me about it. It's called Event Roots. It organizes everything for you. Wow, how does it do that? Well, to start with, you add the details in this box here. You need to add the date, time, and location. Date, time, and location. Right. Next, you invite people by adding their email addresses. How do I do that exactly? Just add them from your contacts, or you can type them in here. Okay. After that, people can reply and say if they can come or not. See. Got it. Finally, you can update the event, like if you want people to bring something, or you want to change the time, and so on. That's great, Alicia. Thanks for your help. You're very welcome. Have a great night. I'm sure Sam will love whatever you organise. I hope so. First. You answer some questions about you. Next, you press go, and then it gives you ideas for things to do. Well, to start with, you add the details in this box here. Next, you invite people by adding their email addresses. After that. People can reply and say they can come or not. Finally, you can update the event. I've found a useful app which I want you to download. Okay, it's called FamSafe, and we can use it to see where everyone in the family is. It lets you share your location with me. Fam safe. Oh yes, I've got that, but I've never used it. How do I share my location? First, make sure you have GPS turned on, like this. Right. Then find me in your contacts. Okay. Next, select share my location with this user. Got it. After that. When I open the app, I can see where you are in real time. We can use it when we go to big events and things like that. Okay, is that it? No. Finally, if you need to call me in an emergency, just say "Call Mum," and your phone will call me. Right. Hopefully, I'll never need to do that. Lucas, you ran the massive mud run last year, didn't you? Yeah. Why? I'm interested in doing it myself, but I'm not sure. Well, I really enjoyed it. It's an interesting course. I've never done anything like it before. Do I have to be very fit? Yes, you do. It's not easy. In fact, it's really tiring. Do you run regularly? Yeah, I do. I run ten kilometers three times a week. Then, with some training, you'll be fine. You don't have to see a doctor before you do it, but it's a good idea. It might make you feel better if you're worried. Good idea. Thanks. And take a look at a map of the course. Make sure you can jump and climb and do everything necessary. Runners have to do everything on the course. You can't miss anything. That includes jumping over the fire. Oh right, okay. Well, I guess that's fair. What kind of clothes do you suggest? You don't have to wear any special clothes. You can wear what you want, 
But remember that there's a lot of mud and water on the course. Yes, I've seen the photos. Can people come and watch? Yeah, all my family came last year. Nice. Is there somewhere for them to eat? Can people bring their own food? Sure. Lots of people had their own picnics last year. You can also buy food on site, and runners can buy food and drinks in the rest area. Oh, can I have a rest during the race? Yes, the race lasts twelve hours, so you'll be tired. You'll need to take some breaks. Oh, right. But if you don't want to run on your own, you can run in a team. Can you? How does that work? Well, only one person in the team runs at one time, so the others have more time to rest. Oh, I didn't know that. That's probably better for me. Where can I find a team? Try the race website. There's loads of information there. Oh, great! I'll have a look tonight. I'm really excited about it now. <laughs> good. It's exhausting, but really good fun too. You have to be sure you want to run, though, because after you pay, you can't get your money back. Okay. Thanks. Good tip. And one last thing: take a lot of clean clothes with you. You'll need them. Do I have to be very fit? You don't have to see a doctor before you do it, but it's a good idea. Runners have to do everything on the course. You don't have to wear any special clothes. Can people bring their own food? Can I have a rest during the race? But if you don't want to run on your own, you can run in a team. After you pay, you can't get your money back. Can I take my own food? Yes, you can. Can we get our money back? No, we can't. Can we run together in a team? Yes, we can. We'd like to tell you about the dog and bone race on Silver Sands Beach. It's a team race. In each team, there's one dog and one person. People with big dogs have to run two kilometers along the beach. People with small dogs have to run one kilometer. Dogs have to wear a number around their neck. The people have to wear a number on their back. The rules of the race are simple. You have to run the race with your dog from start to finish. The dogs have to run all the way. You can't carry them if they get tired, and the dogs can't carry you either. <laughs> you can carry water and food for your dogs if you want, but you don't have to. There'll be dishes of water for the dogs on the beach. The winning team in each group wins prizes. For you, a free meal at a restaurant, and for the dogs, some special dog chocolate. We think this is an exciting event because dogs and people can enjoy the race together. They can take their usual walk, but do an amazing event at the same time. Families can come and watch the race too. It'll be a great day out for everyone. Hi, Lucy. How's it going? Good, thanks, Susan. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. A few of us are having a picnic on Saturday. Would you like to come? I'd love to. The weather's going to be great. Great. Shall we meet at ten by the entrance to the park? I don't know. 
it gets really busy there and we might not see each other. Let's meet in front of the bank in Queen Street. OK, no problem. I'll let the others know. Good. See you then. Hello? Hey, Jimmy. Chris here. Chris! We haven't spoken in ages. Exactly. That's why I'm phoning, actually. Do you want to meet up this Friday? Ah, uh, I don't think I can, sorry. I'm working in Edinburgh on Friday. What about Sunday? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm busy. We're having a big family dinner. Mm, next week sometime, Wednesday. Wednesday's good for me. Where shall we meet? How about uh, Flavio's Cafe in town? We can have lunch together. That's a good idea. What time? One o'clock. Perfect. One o'clock it is. Do you have any plans for the weekend, Tanya? Oh, yes. I'm going to pop in the park with some friends. Oh, is that the free concert? I heard about that. That's right. Do you want to join us? Yeah, that sounds fun. How are you getting there? We're not sure yet. Maybe public transport, but it's going to be really busy. Should we get a taxi together? I'm not sure about that. Taxis are expensive. Yes, but if we share one, it'll be cheaper. That's a good point. I'll ask the others and see what they think. OK. Would you like to come? Do you want to join us? I'd love to. Where shall we meet? Shall we meet at ten? That's a good idea.